because it's not that cool. But good morning. Good to see you. I'm glad you are here in the house of the Lord. We're excited to have worship with you and to see what God has in store for us today. Amen. Amen. Our scripture is Acts 13, 1 through 3. Now in the church of Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they, play, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. Well, it add the blessing to the reading of the word. That was loud. All right, good morning. Good morning. All right, if you guys will stand with us and if the kiddos will join us up here. They're right here. Don't you guys want to come dance and play with us? Yeah? Awesome. All right. for a minute. Daniel and Elena. Oh, we got Merlin back there. Excellent. I still need two. Got 17. We have helpful volunteers.
Father, we thank you for providing for our church. God, I ask that this would be uh, furthering your kingdom and that you would bless us as we try to bless our community. In Jesus' name, amen. I uh, am also apparently doing our teen mission report. Not apparently, I knew I was doing it. I'm doing all the things. So, our, uh, just to letting you know, we have just uh, gotten over, or not gone over, but had just um, done our week of teen mission, not this last week, the week before that. Um, if anybody that had participated or had some way helped in that, uh, would you please stand? <laughs> it's a lot of our church. And a lot of the church that, it, that, had, uh, that isn't here is also, um, was also a part. Thank you, guys. Um, we, uh, we had a great week. We had um, 28 students, and then with our junior staff, we had 35. Um, and so we had a good group. We did, I believe, 18 sites, if I remember the number correctly. Um, oh, really? Yeah. All of it was in the 30s, so uh, we had we had sites, and then they, we added sites to it as well. So we, we did quite a bit with just the small group that we had. Um, and my yeah, they worked really hard. And uh, and I my family I'm a family head, and I was able to speak with um, a lot of the youth there. Me and Davey kind of headed that group up, up, and it was an exciting time. And we spoke a lot about Jesus, and people got closer to God. I'm proud of our youth. Um, Ivy and Briar were our junior staff this year, and they did a fantastic job. Nice job, guys. I got bragged on by, by them saying, they're great youth. And so I, I appreciate that. And um, they had also, uh, one of the leaders also suggested that Kevy be junior staff next year. So I think that sticks of, of how they're doing. Um, so I'm, like I said, I'm proud of them. I'm proud of what we do in Teen Mission. Um, we're trying to reach our community, trying to reach our youth, and it's just one of the ways. Um, I'm hoping next year that, that we're able to, to gather more and to gather more youth and be able to, to reach our community in a better way. Um, but it's a fantastic time, and it doesn't happen without you guys' prayers and help. And um, I'm just really, really thankful for a church that supports this mission. So uh, with that, I, I just really just give sincere thanks to you guys for your prayer and for supporting uh, us as youth pastors and the youth and uh, the ministries that we do. So thank you. Um, now, we have a great honor of also commissioning one of our oldest youth that we have here currently. So Davey, if you would come up. I'm not young anymore, it's awful. Before, before we uh, take a moment to read this commissioning, um, I am so proud of this girl. And I'm not quite ready to say goodbye. But this is what happens when a church raises one up and raises them up in ministry, which is what our church has been called and continues to be called to do, is to raise up leaders, preachers, and singers of the gospel. And uh, although she's not going as far as she originally wanted to, <laughs> um, That's true. I don't know what the Lord holds for every season of the rest of her life, but I know this next season she's going to be leading youth ministry, and she's going to be preaching and singing at Victorious Life, leading music there. And I know that she just entered a program to start ministry school. So, yeah. So this is what, this is what we're called to do. In some ways, this is really hard, but it's really good. We raise them up and we send them out. That's what, that's what the Lord has commissioned us as Baroque to do, is to raise them up, loving the Lord, and to send them out to do what they're called to do to further his kingdom. And I know that Davey's going to do that. And that is in part due to this body and you guys investing into her life. Yes. There was a, a question you recently asked me about why I treated you like a PK. <laughs> And um, I treated you because you wanted to, to be 
closer to God. And to do that, you wanted a next level. And so I was excited, and Kim and I have done our best to uh, raise you that way. And I know that Pastor Debbie has helped, and the elders have helped, and this church has, has raised you into that uh, leadership, and we're very proud of you. And um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting thing that um, I didn't actually expect to be able to do this so early in, in our ministries, I guess, for Kim and I, but um, being able to be youth pastors and then watching one of our youth become in ministry is an exciting thing, and I'm, I'm proud of you, and I'm excited what God has in store for you. Our, um, <clears throat> our commissioning is out of the uh, blue book in 796. And it's just something that I'm going to read. Uh, it's a same commission that we gave for Trevor. As God's spirit calls and the church commissions, the servants of Christ are scattered in places of need throughout the world. We accept your service as an extension of this congregation and pledge our support of your ministry. Yeah. That's the great thing about sending people out is that you don't really ever leave us. We join with you in seeking the first the kingdom of God. Consider your assignment as God at work in you, ministering to human need. May you be given a deep love for those among whom you will live and may Christ be known through you and the word and deed. Our prayers will continually support you while you are away from us. In Jesus Christ. At this time, I'm gonna ask that the elders and pastors come and pray over Davy. And anyone else who feels led can also come and pray over Davy.
Lord, I thank you for the work you've begun yeah. and the work that you're doing and the work that you're bringing to completion. I thank you, Lord, for the grace and the love that you put within me. Yeah. I ask, Lord, that you would continue to help her to grow in your grace and your love, that she would show forth your glory, Lord, wherever she goes. I thank you, Lord, for the heart that is given wholeheartedly to you, and I ask, Lord God, that you would protect her in Jesus' name. Father, I ask that you would continue to pour your anointing and your presence into David's life and her personal life. Lord, I ask that you would help that to grow. Father, I ask that, that David would always be biblically founded. I ask that she would be Holy Spirit driven. That she would carry the love of Christ wherever she walks. That people would be drawn to you through David. God, I ask that you would be father-minded as she continues to grow and expand and understand who you are. That she'd be able to teach others the love, the care, and the work that you would like to do in other people's lives. I thank you for her ministry. I thank you for the ministry, not just in this season, but the next season, the season after that, and the season after that. The Lord, that you would protect her from burnout. You would protect her from the enemy. And the Father, that she would be blessed. Because you are blessing her. In Jesus' name. At this time, if anybody has a word for Davey, I would want to open that up for Ryan. Lord helps people who are sick and coughing. Amen. Amen. Nicole. While you're praying, we hope the Holy Spirit bless you. Amen. Amen.
We seal those in Jesus' name. We love you. Yes. Okay. At this time, we are going to dismiss, dismiss our children. And we will continue worship up here. You guys are able to stand with the power you feel in. This next song that we're going to sing was our Teen Mission theme song for this year. So you guys may not have heard it unless you were at Teen Mission. But our theme this year was being a living sacrifice from Romans 12. Put ourselves on the altar to really worship him. And we saw teens who were transforming through the week. We saw adults who were transforming through the week. So I encourage you to lean into that.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for thank you for being the name to everything. Thank you for being all. And Lord, thank you for a song that's such an anthem in our church. Lord, that you've taught us to call on you. You've taught us your name. You've taught us your nature. And so, Father, I ask and invite your nature into the room. Lord, that when you show up, lives are changed. The fruit of your spirit is obvious when you're in the room. You provide, you heal, you restore, you reconcile. So Lord, I give you praise and honor because you deserve the glory. When we call upon your name, Jesus, when we call upon your name, Father, and when we call upon the Holy Spirit, you are faithful to show up and be that God. I'm so grateful you're the God I need and not the God I want. I am so grateful you're the God I need and not the God I want. Align our desires with you. Align our desires and align our nature to look more like yours. When we call upon the name of Jesus, we begin to look like Jesus. So Lord, I ask that we would look like you. We're going to sing this through one more time. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and I'll show you. God loves us. I've seen his mercy. I've seen his love. I've seen his mighty things. And I believe that we will all see every one of those things, even if it's right in front of us. Sometimes we might not notice it, but we see it.
get old. It's no fun. Um, got an individual word uh, for you, Ivy. I don't know why. Ivy and I did nothing but face off when she was a little girl. <laughs> uh, but uh, I just want all of us to test this. Ivy, God has seen your decisions. He's seen you working hard. And he's getting ready to be great and mighty to you, in you, and through you. And he's asking, are you ready? That's all I have. We have witnesses on that, so Ivy, that's for you. There was, um, as I was praying, I felt like I was supposed to pray peace. That when waves and crashes in the, in the Bible and, and when the disciples were in, in the, um, and they, they woke up Jesus and asked, well, why, why, why is this happening? Where are you? And Jesus just gets up and says, peace. And I think that all of us have different things that we're wanting peace in, whether it's peace in our tribulations in our own life, or even peace in our families, peace in our work. And I heard the Father just raise his hand and say, peace. And so I, I pray that over this church, that there would be peace. In the situations in your life, uh, the Father is commanding calm and His presence into those situations. I want to attest it so we have witnesses for that. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I felt the way. Yeah. There's a There's a warning that, I, that I, I felt like I needed to give as well. That this is not a one-time decisions of following Jesus. And that the wolves are out. And he comes to devour you. And to hold fast and steady to the I am. because he brings peace. We're gonna test that word as well. Yeah, fear is a big thing right now. Yeah, the world is a, yeah, he's Jehovah Jireh, he's the provider. Pastor Debbie, I can. Would you put up the Jehovah uh, the words? When we were doing this, I'm like, there are some that may not know what these are, and they so bless me when we sing them. And uh, Jehovah, and yeah, and we should know this is who God is for us. That He owns these things, and and I want you to know what it is if you don't. So, Jehovah Nissi is He is our banner. He is the banner of us. He leads us into battle that he, he has us, that he's our banner. He's our banner. Jehovah Rophe is he's our healer. Jehovah Rophe, Jehovah is this, the name, this is a name of God. He's our healer. Jehovah Jireh is that he is our provider. And El Shaddai is that he is more than enough, that he is almighty God. 
And when I, when I sing these, I just feel them in my heart, and I want you to know that he is your banner, your healer, your provider, your everything. Anyone else? Have we been obedient to the Holy Spirit so far? If there is nothing else, there's a scripture reading. I have up here, Dina, and in the bulletins I have me, so I'm not sure who's supposed to be reading. I am. Okay, Dina volunteers me. <laughs> I'm already up here, so it might as well. <laughs> Pull me up my Bible here. Okay. Scroll on down from the beginning of where we started today. Acts 13, 41. Look, you scoffers, wonder and perish, for I am going to do something in your days that you would never believe, even if someone told you. As Paul and Barnabas were leaving the synagogue, the people invited them to speak further about these things on the next Sabbath. When the congregation was dismissed, many of the Jews and devout converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who talked with them and urged them to continue in the grace of God. On the next Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. Wouldn't it be something if all of Rensselaer came to hear the word of the Lord? When the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy. God help us. They began to contradict what Paul was saying and heaped abuse on him. Then Paul and Barnabas answered them boldly, We had to speak the word of God to you first. Since you reject it and do not consider yourself worthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. For this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and honored the word of the Lord. And all who were appointed for eternal life believed. The word and the Lord spread through the whole region. Glory. But the Jewish leaders inside the God-fearing women of high standing and the leading men of the city... They stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from the region. So they shook the dust off their feet as a warning to them and went to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. May God add the blessing to the reading of the word. In junior church, we have Pastor Kim and Ivy. In toddler nursery, we have Emmett and Kevy. And our sermon up here is Pastor Kent. So, Lord, I ask that you would bless those that are serving. We ask that you would bless our junior, our, uh, junior church leaders, God, and that you would bless our children. Father, that um, I pause because you have always said through my wife, and I've heard it, is that there is no junior Holy Spirit. Right. So, God, I ask that you would speak to them boldly, and that we would be able to hear you speak through them. God, I ask that up here that we would hear your words, that we would consider what you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen.
don't think we're done praying like for, for the body to just extend their hands. It's on. It's green. <clears throat> Pray with me. Well, Father, I lift up your people this morning. I lift up your people around this nation, around this world, but especially our people right here, Father. The people in this sanctuary, the people that will view this sermon online that are watching now and that will see it later. Father, I pray your blessing and your power and your spirit on this body of believers. Lord, I'm asking this morning that you would fan into flame every gifting, every working, every calling that and every promise that you have for, for this body of believers. Father, I ask that you would give us a glimpse a vision of who we are and what we carry this morning, Father, that we would know our power and our influence in you. And I ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Whew, I am stirred this morning. Boy. Here we go. Here we go. <sighs> well, I'm, I'm excited just as, as this service has, has begun and, and watching everybody move in the spirit this morning, Josiah, I was so glad that, that I watched you this morning get up here and pray with Davey, get up here and, and, and share some words because I've got you in my sermon this morning. I was going to talk about you this morning. You are a mighty man of God. You are a mighty man of God. Woo. Raise them up. Raise them up. Raise them up, Lord. Well, one of the things that I like about the books of Acts and that we will see as we, we get into chapter 13 this morning is that we get to get a glimpse, we get to get a good look at the way that the church functions as a body of believers that this first church how they got things done how they functioned as a body of believers and as we look at chapter 13 again it's important for us to remember that this church is is just getting started this is the the very beginning of the church age they don't have a new testament with all the instructions on orderly worship and 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 the, the the giftings in the church they're they're relying heavily on following and knowing the holy spirit and if you just go back just a, a couple chapters to chapter 11 it, it starts out saying this now those who had been scattered by the persecution in connection with stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, telling the message only to Jews. Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch, and they began to speak to the Greeks, also telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. And so we've already learned from 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 our series in Acts that all of this began in Jerusalem with the 120 and they received the promise and the power and the gifting of the Holy Spirit on, on Pentecost and then they began to explain and to preach and to demonstrate the kingdom and the power of Jesus and, and to tell the people of Jerusalem about the power of Jesus and the church began to grow. They, they were walking out the great commission that, that Jesus had called them to, and they were making disciples. But then as the, the Jewish leaders saw all of this happening and, and saw that, that people were converting to the way and, and following the disciples, they became jealous. And we know that the, the persecution broke out, and then after Stephen was stoned, it really broke out and the church was forced to scatter. And as a result of that, 
even more people began to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. The church continues to grow. And as this church grows, we begin to see the different functions of people in the church, the, the different callings, the different giftings. And in chapter 13, the author starts right, out, right off with that. At the, the very first verse in chapter 13, he says that there were prophets and teachers in the church in Antioch. And we were also first introduced to prophets in the church back in chapter 11. And it says that uh, during this time after they were scattered, some of the prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. So this church in Antioch that we're, we're looking at in chapter 13, some of the prophets that were in Jerusalem are sent there. And I know that we are probably familiar with the gift of prophecy or, or prophets from the Old Testament, the, that God raised up prophets to speak to his people on his behalf. We, we know about that in the Old Testament. He, God himself, talks about it in uh, Deuteronomy, and he says, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own brothers. You must listen to him, for this is what you asked for, this is what you asked of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly. And what God is talking about there is when the Israelites were on their exodus from Egypt and they were wandering in the desert and they ended up at Mount Sinai and where God gave them the, the Ten Commandments. And when they were all gathered at the base of the mountain and, and the mountain was billowing in smoke, and there was lightning and fire, and, and it says that there was a great trumpet sound, and when the Lord spoke, it was like thunder, and it terrified the people so bad that they said, Moses, please, you speak to us. We can't hardly stand this. It's, it's too much for us to take, God speaking to us himself. And so that's how we got prophets. That's where prophets rose up. It was just too much for the people to stand for, for God talking to him himself, terrified him. And we know that uh, from scripture, the, the role of the prophet in church is to preach, to exhort or explain or to foretell, to, to speak of, of future events. But the speaking of future events isn't the only function of a prophet, but it seems to be a large part of what the prophet does. But um, um, he has other functions. And it's also important to understand then and now that not all prophets speak on behalf of God. That some, some as, as God puts it, speak presumptuously. And God spoke uh, about this himself also in Deuteronomy and he said you may say to yourselves how can we know when a message has not been spoken by the Lord and he says if a prophet what he proclaims does not take place or come true then that is a message the Lord has not spoken that prophet has spoken presumptuously and do not be afraid of him and so it's important that as we, we look at the gift or the function of, of prophecy in the church that we be, be aware. And, and I like what we did today. We, we tested our words and we make sure that, that what is, is um, spoken by the prophet is from the Lord. And I don't want you to think that I'm all wrapped up in prophets or prophecy this morning, but what I, what I am interested in is, is the gifts in the church, the way the, the, the church functions and, and the different uh, uh, giftings that God used, how he used his people in the church. And the church at Antioch in chapter 13, they're about to make 
uh, a decision. They're about to make a, a ministry decision. And the first thing that was mentioned in the chapter was prophets and teachers. And so they are going to be instrumental in, in this decision and how it's made. And again, it says in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers. And then the author goes on to give us their names. And then he says, while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. And so after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. And so just look at, at those first three verses. You, you start to get a picture of, of the church functioning the way that God designed it. They were gathered together and they were worshiping together and the Lord spoke and he says, I have work for Paul, for Saul, and for Barnabas. I want you to set them aside for me. And the scripture doesn't come right out and say it, but I believe that the reason the prophets and the teachers were mentioned right off the bat is because that's how they heard the Lord speak. It was the prophets that said, hey, hey, wait a minute. I'm hearing something from the Lord. He wants us to set aside Paul and, and Barnabas for, for the ministry this morning. And I want us to notice that, you know, this is going to be Paul and Barnabas' first mission trip. And, you know, it, it didn't take place by having some big planning session. They didn't have a bunch of charts and, and graphs all set up with, with uh, statistics. Now, 38% of the Gentiles will listen to this message, and, and we got to reach the Jews this way. No, they were, they were just gathered together worshiping. They ushered in the presence of God, and when his presence was, was ushered in, the gifts and the callings that were on the people began to function and they were able to hear from the Lord and to, and to do the will of God. See, they weren't acting on their own accord that way, but they were following what God had. And according to, to Scripture, according to my Bible, this is the way that the church is supposed to function. I was excited to, to see it happening here this morning. I mean, it was, it was awesome. And scripture backs this up as well. It says in 1 Corinthians, what then shall we say, brothers and sisters, when you come together, everyone has a hymn or a word of instruction or revelation, a tongue or an interpretation. And all of these must be done for the strengthening of the church. And then Paul goes on to explain that this is to be done in an orderly fashion. You know, we've, we've all got gifts. We've all got, maybe God gives us a, a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, but we're not all supposed to jump up at once and, and speak at once. But everything is done in an orderly fashion so that everyone can hear or, or see what, what the Lord is doing, what the Lord is saying, and then everyone is, is in edified by it. Everyone gains something from it. And so he, he, he does it in an orderly fashion. And we saw that this morning. And this, this is what I had in my sermon uh, and why I was stirred to see Josiah get up this morning because... That is, is one of my favorite things right now is, is to watch Josiah get up here and, and he'll share a vision or he'll share something that the Lord put on his heart. And as you watch that, I hope you see a couple things. One, that boy loves Jesus. He's got a heart. He's got a heart for the Lord. And another thing, he's desiring to find out what his giftings 
what his callings are. And so he's getting up and exercising them. He wants to know what his place is. He's trying to find his place in the body of believers. And I am so encouraged by you. He's doing things that, that grown-up people are afraid to do. So follow, look at his example. And I'm going to tell you another thing. When he talks, I listen. Because I know he's hearing from the Lord. And so as he grows up, and he grows in his giftings, and he grows into a man. The enemy's got nothing but trouble on his hands because you are mighty. You are mighty in the Lord. I want you to know that this morning. And something else that I hope we all see is, and this is scriptural too, he's eagerly desiring to know his gifts. And scripture encourages us to do that. It says it in a couple places. Um, 1 Corinthians in, in chapter 12, it tells us, eagerly desire the greater gifts. And in 14.1, it says, follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. And so it's all right to, to want to know your spiritual gifting. It's all right to know what want to know what, what God would have you to do. We should be excited about it. We should, we should want to, to know and, and want to use them and want to ec exercise them. And I know that some of you here today, and I used to think so as well, you know, I'd be sitting in church thinking, I don't know about all that. And, and you know, I could never do that for, for whatever reason. And I want you to know that's not true because this is what you were made for. This is how God has designed the body to work. And each and every one of you this morning, there, there's something that God has for you to say, to do, to interpret, to speak. Um, that, that earlier scripture I read, it said everyone has something, everyone. And so when you gather, when we gather together, you should come thinking, man, I wonder what the Lord's got for me to do th this morning. You know, it's, it's good to come and receive, but it's good to come and give as well, be a part. And so I want to encourage you this morning to, 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 to eagerly desire your giftings. And I know I've been talking a lot about prophets and prophecies, but there, there's many different kinds of callings. There's many different kinds of giftings and workings in the church. There's a list of some of them also in 1 Corinthians. And it tells us that, Paul tells us that, now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good, for everybody, like I was saying. And to one there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge. To another, faith by the same spirit and to another gifts of healing and by that one spirit to another miraculous powers and to another prophecy and to another distinguishing between spirits and to another the speaking in different kinds of tongues and still to another the interpretation of tongues and these are all the work of the one and the same spirit and he gives them to each one just as he determines. And I hope as, as I read through that list and you, you listened to all the different functions that, that God uses that, that just allow the Holy Spirit to, to speak into you this morning. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's yours. That one's what I've called you to do. Just allow the Holy Spirit to speak into your, your heart this morning. He uses us all in different ways, but it's still by the power of the Holy Spirit. The same Spirit gifts us all, gives us all the, the same workings. And so all of this is, is something that, that we shouldn't be afraid of, that we, we shouldn't shy away from. But, but that, that we should know that, that it's God's desire to, to walk in this way. And 
I always like it when people explain to me, you know, how do you do things? You know, how do I get started in this working in my giftings? You know, and uh, the, the Bible gives us some good instructions on, on how to get going in this. And you know, one of the things that, that Jesus taught when he taught his disciples about following him, and there's a good reason why he told them this, he said that no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom. And he was, he was telling his disciples because when he told them that, there were, there were several people that said, I'll follow you, Jesus, but for one reason or another, they had something else to do first. And what he's telling us is, is that if we're going to follow Jesus, we've got to do it wholeheartedly. We, we can't be divided. We can't be always distracted or tempted by our old life, always looking back. Um, because we end up missing so much of, of what God's showing us or what he's telling us, what he's saying to us when we're distracted looking back at our old life. And Romans touches this on this also. And Paul said in Romans, I urge you brothers in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and pleasing and perfect will. For it is by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourselves with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Just as each one of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others, and we have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, then let him encourage. And if it is contributing to the needs of others, then let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. And if it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. And he sees Paul saying that when we're not distracted and conformed by this world, when we're not looking back at our old life, that we can get into our giftings. We can know for certain God's good and pleasing will, and then we will begin to function in the giftings that each one of us has. You know, we can't be all like, yeah, I love you, Jesus, but yeah, I like my buddies back there at the bar, too. You know, we're, we're distracted then, and, and we're divided. And when we're all following Jesus with our whole heart, then we're not, we're not turning back. We're not looking at our old life. And we're able to function as, as the Lord wants us to. And like it or not, but just as Paul said, we're all connected together. We all belong to each other. You guys are stuck with me as long as I claim to be a part of Burr Oak. And what I do and the way I live has an effect on you. It has an influence on what happens here. And that's the same for every one of us. And Jesus is looking for wholehearted followers that have their hand to the plow, that, that give up whatever it was that, that, that your old life had for you. It's not there anymore. It matters not. Yeah. So why is all of this important? What, what's this mean for us? What, what's this have to do with, with Burr Oak? Well, for one thing, as a church, we have some important decisions that are in our not-too-distant future. Um, 
you know, we have some, some serious decisions to, to look at concerning our finances and our budget. And I would like, as we look at that, the, the, the church to be functioning in the Holy Spirit, that fear about the economy and, and the way the world looks wouldn't overtake us, but that we would function in our gifts, that, that uh, our prophets would rise up and say, this is what I hear from the Lord, that those that have the, the gift of wisdom would say, this is what I have from the Lord, that we would make financial decisions in that way. Um, another decision that, that we'll be looking at sometime soon is we need to add some elders to, to the elder board. And so again, I would like to see that done by the Holy Spirit because we do that as a body. We, we select people to that we look at and, and discern to be elders. And so it's important that we use our spiritual gifts, that we discern that together, and that we get the right men and women to, in, the, in the elder position. So again, it's important that we function in our gifting, in our callings as, as we make these decisions. Another reason I, I think this affects us as, as a body of believers, and I hate to keep harping on this, the same thing or, or sounding, but uh, talking about the same things, but again, one of the things that we keep hearing from this pulpit and, and from different pastors and different preachers is uh, we're looking at, at the way we do church. And, you know, it's been said that this model, we, we've been doing this for, what, like 100 years, maybe longer, and, and it doesn't seem to be effective that people aren't going to come knocking down our doors and, and, and come running in here. And, you know, I'm, I'm all for change. And, you know, I've, over the years, I've, I've looked at all different kind of programs. I've sat in in different kind of planning sessions and and looked at different models. Uh, I remember there was a, a time here where where the cell church that was that was the thing, you know, that's that's the model. Little churches that meet at home and then we gather together. You know, I, I'm all for change. I, I'm not I, I believe God is calling us to change and and we can have programs and not have programs we can have the latest and greatest worship music and and all the fancy stuff that goes with it but if we don't have this right. if we don't have the the design that, that God gave the church that can't change no matter no matter what God calls us to in the future, no matter how he, he says that, that church is supposed to look, we still have to have the functioning of the Holy Spirit and the functioning and the giftings and the callings and the workings in the church. That's not going to change. That can't change because if we don't have that, then we don't have a Jesus Christ head of the church. And this is all about Jesus. So that's something that, that definitely cannot change it it has to be that and so i wanted that on our hearts and minds as as we discern our future and you know i, I don't want you to you know when when we look at the the church in acts you know i don't want you to think this was the the perfect church because it's not. I mean, I know a lot of times when we read about the, the, the church in Acts, we, we tend to look at it with these rose-colored glasses, and man, they had it going on. They did have it going on, and they did a lot of awesome things, but they also, as you read through the, the book of Acts, they also had their troubles. They also had their problems. They had arguments. 
They had division. They had, they had problems. They, they were trying to figure it out as they went. And so it, it wasn't the perfect church. Church gets messy. When you get a bunch of weirdos like us together, church gets messy. We're not always going to agree. We're not always going to uh, see things the same way. But every answer, every answer is in our Bibles. Yeah. Every resolution, every restoration, every healing, everything is, is that we need to go into the future and be the church that God's calling us to be is in our Bible. So we can do this. We can work through our problems. But mostly, this is what speaks to me about what we've been, been learning in, in the books of Acts. No matter, no matter what, what way the church that God has us go, what it looks like, you look at this church, it started with 12 disciples that were following Jesus. And they were trying their best to understand and to hang on to everything he taught them got kind of dicey sometimes and then it went to 120 or so in the upper room at Jerusalem and when the power and the Holy Spirit fell on that 120 God broke out the Holy Spirit broke out and they have carried that message in the church and the way the church functions around the world it's the most successful church that you're ever going to see. God set it up and designed it in such a way that, that it, it can't fail. And I know that, uh, you know, I only covered three chapters of 13 of Acts. That's, that's I, all I felt like I needed this morning. Paul and Barnabas went out. They went around to different regions. They faced opposition. They faced persecution, and the Holy Spirit empowered them, and they made disciples in spite of. Yeah. This is the most successful church that you're ever going to have a model of. And so no matter what it looks like, this is the model that I want for us. This is the model that I want for Baroque. This is the model that I believe that God wants for us don't have all the answers, don't have all the what it's going to look like. But I do know that we are going to be a people that functions and operates in the gifts. And I don't want you all to, to be hesitant about that or to, to, to lack in any way. And so I thought this morning that as the worship team sings the, the last song, I did want to open the altar this morning that I wanted to have the pastors, Pastor Caleb and Pastor Debbie, if, if you are able and if you feel led and, and want to, I want to, to have us up and available for prayer this morning. And if you desire to know your gifting, if you don't know it for sure, then come up and, and let us agree in prayer. Let's, let's ask the Holy Spirit to begin to speak to your heart and, and reveal things. If, if you're still looking back, if you're still distracted, come up and let us pray for you this morning. Jesus said that we're transformed by the renewing of our minds. And he, he has a new thought process that, that he wants to impart in your, in your mind this morning. And, and we can get that started this morning.
pray that you would seal all that you have spoken and that your presence would be known for those that are praying by themselves father that those are the same prayers as prayed up here i ask that you would seal it in the name of jesus god let your presence be known and glorified in jesus name amen Has everyone been obedient to the Holy Spirit? John 3, everybody knows John 3, 16, on down to um, 21. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe stand condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world. But people loved the darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly, plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. There's a, a, a word on my heart that says that there are people that want to live partly in the light and partly in the dark. That, that you want to live in the light, but there's things that you want to keep in the dark. That there's, that there's, there's places that you want to keep hidden. And God's saying clearly, if you believe in him, you're not condemned. You need to come out of the dark and live in the light. That people, the, the, the verdict is that light has come into the world. There are people who love darkness instead of light because their deeds are evil. But everyone who does evil hates the light, will not come into the light. The Lord's wanting you to come into the light. And if there's darkness in your life, find a way to get it exposed to the light. Bring it into the light. Don't hold on to those evil things, to the darkness. Bring it into the light. And I, I just feel like that there's somebody here that needs to know that they need to come into the light. Well, that's in the Bible. So I'm going to say that that is true. So, but if that speaks to you individually, it's time to come into light. Something that I, I said to um, just now, but that if we give 100%, Jesus is going to give 100% back. Right. At this time, we are going to end our live stream and we're going to pray for those that have been watching. So, Father, I ask that you would bless those who uh, have not been able to be with us today. I ask that, that uh, the words that have been spoken, that may have been for them, God, that you would seal it. Father, I ask that there be an anointing and a blessing to those who do watch this, that, God, that you would speak. We thank you for our community, our community that watches. In Jesus' name. Amen.